morning. Welcome back to Mishmas. I am very excited today. We have changed into new jammies. <laughs> so I've got my last pair of Christmas jammies from EverJ on. These are the green ones that just have um, Christmas trees on them or pine trees. I love this. I love these. I'm glad I'm ending with a green pair. Just pouring out my coffee. Very excited. <laughs> and I am almost giddy for today's video. I am doing what I do once a year during Mishmas. It's become a tradition, but this is my absolute all time favorite makeup. And wow, it, I probably started making this list around Thanksgiving. I was like, I need to start. I need to start thinking about this. I'm glad I did because there were still a couple of categories I just was not sure about. I was swapping things in and out. Things were coming to me, I was like, oh my God. I'm like, I have to mention this. This is absolutely my new favorite now. I have to say, a bit of my list has been replaced from last year. Surprisingly, but I have good reason. But anyway, it's a very long video because I also decided to put as much of the makeup on as possible. So usually I just talk about the makeup. Maybe I'll throw some, you know, um, cutaways to me applying it or cutaways to like some B-roll or whatever. But I thought, you know what? Let's like put it on while I'm talking about it. And so you guys can see it, actually see it full on in action. It was really for me to like remind myself as I'm using it, like all of the aspects of it that I really, really love so that I could express to you exactly why these are like my absolute <laughs> all time favorite uh, makeup. All right, let's open up these advent calendars for day 17. Day 17, we have a week and a day left of Mishmas, can you believe it? This is really, it's starting to feel like it's flying by. Okay guys, day 17 for the advent calendars. We're gonna start with Jo Malone, of course. 17. We've got the Peony and Blush Suede Body and Hand Lotion. I love these, these are so great for travel and also to put in my guest room, really nice. All right, what have we got for decorate today? We are looking for 17. I really love how this, <laughs> this has turned into like a Where's Waldo because I can never find the day. Oh my gosh, okay. Oh, here it is. It's all the way up here. Ah, some more of their skincare from the AQ line. This is the Absolute Treatment Cream. Ooh. Okay, Cicely, what you got for 17? We have, oh, what's this? The Buff and Wash Facial Gel. I don't think I've ever used this. Exciting. Okay, YSL 17. Oh, it's down here. Ooh, what's this? But the Eau Rouge. It is a cream. Oh, wow, yeah, I'm really unfamiliar with YSL skincare. Oh, exciting. All right, Diptyque. Day 17, oh, right up here, let's see what we have. Oh, we have Dosan, an EDT spray. This, I think I've said this before, but I think this is their best-selling fragrance. It's really just, it's so light, it's very pleasant. It's a really pleasant fragrance. All right, we are doing my absolute, all-time, favorite luxury beauty today. I do this once a year during Mishmas. I think I've done this like my favorites where I'll talk about the products, I'll showcase them, I'll do cutaways to swatches and me putting them on. However, this year, we're just gonna put it on and talk about all the stuff all at once. So, gosh, I've got so many products. I'm not gonna be able to put all of it on We'll talk about it though, uh, because I have like cream and powder options or whatever. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into it because I wanna start with primer. And that would be the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. I love this. I tend to have dry skin and this is a very uh, moisturizing, but it's not oily or greasy. I don't feel like it interferes with my makeup, but I feel like it just does such a wonderful job prepping my skin for makeup, um, also kind of protecting it from the drying effects that sometimes makeup can have. And it just feels really, really good. So I'm just gonna slather some on, and this is on top of 
pretty much all of my skincare. It has a citrusy fragrance, which I happen to like. I know some of you um, don't like it, are opposed to it, so I just want to mention that. But I just like to put a nice big dollop on. With all the playing around of makeup that I've done over the past several years, I have noticed that the biggest obstacle to good looking makeup is dry skin. Skin that just is not well moisturized. So this is pretty much a remedy to that. So that is my primer pick. Now I'm gonna jump over to a liquid highlighter, which is my liquid highlighter pick, but I do also like to use it as primer. You guys know what I'm gonna talk about, but that is the Westman Atelier Liquid Super Loaded Tinted Highlight. And I like to use the shade Peau de Peche underneath my eyes as a primer. Now, people ask me all the time, can I use this in lieu of a corrector or concealer? Uh, I would say no, because it doesn't do much in terms of coverage or color correction. But what it does is it smooths the skin, it wakes up that whole area, it brightens, and I think it really helps with the application of concealer or foundation over it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put just a little bit on. You don't need a lot because it is a liquid highlight and I don't want, <laughs> I don't want like a ton of highlight underneath my eyes, just a little bit, just a hint to kind of shine a spotlight upwards into my eyes. So I'm just shaking it up and I'm gonna just squeeze out just a drop. I mean, that is it. And again, this is the Peau de Rosé shade. There are three shades. There's Peau de Peche, which I actually like to use on my face, and then there's uh, Peau de Soleil, which is bronzy. And that is really nice if you have a similar skin tone to me. That's really nice to kind of mix into foundation if you want to deepen it up a little bit, if you want to add a little bit of a highlighty glow to your foundation. It's wonderful. Uh, but I'm just gonna tap my finger in here and just add a little bit under my eyes and it really just gives the appearance of smoothness smoothness and brightness under the eyes and i am here for it i love it so much <laughs> love it so much and it feels so so nice my under eyes tend to get very dry, very dry looking very, very quickly throughout the day if I don't moisturize well. And this helps not only moisturize the area, but kind of like keep moisture in. So this is actually my uh, liquid highlighter pick for absolute all time favorite, but I do like using it as primer. So just got it out of the way. In terms of foundation, okay, you guys, I had to cheat a little bit here. You're gonna hear me say that quite a bit. I had to break it out into two categories, basically. I have foundation and I have tinted moisturizer. So I have Dr. Jart BB <laughs> Premium Beauty Balm as my all-time favorite tinted moisturizer. I've talked about this incessantly over this past year. This was in my best of 2023 video because Dr. Jart had a product like this, but they reformulated it, I believe, towards the beginning of this year. So it now has an SPF 40 versus 50, which is what it had before, but now there are more shades, I believe. I use Fairlight. I just love it. It's very smoothing. Uh, you can check out my best of 2023 video if you're interested in hearing more about this, but I really have talked about this incessantly on my channel. I love it. It just smooths the skin. My friend Laura was just here. She tried it. She was like, oh my goodness, I love the finish that it gives my skin. It's like dewy, but it's not overdone. You don't just look sweaty or wet or greasy. It just is this nice, healthy kind of radiance. In terms of foundation, this is no change from last year. The Surat Dewdrop Foundation. This is my all-time favorite foundation. I use it in the shade number three, and it is a foundation that has light coverage, so you could argue <laughs> that these are very similar in their qualities, but the effect is completely different. Uh, this Dewdrop uh, foundation, it's a serum foundation, so it's much thinner. The Dr. Jart is much creamier. Again, it's kind of categorized as a tinted moisturizer, a tinted SPF. This is a straight up foundation with light coverage. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply this because I haven't applied this with you guys in a while and it is my all time favorite foundation. So I do prefer a lighter coverage foundation. I do prefer ones that are light coverage but can be built up for those days where you feel like you need a little bit of help. Um, I also really, really appreciate the effect that this has on my skin. And it does a lot of camouflaging with um, like light refraction. I don't know how else to describe it, but it is 
um, really, really perfecting and it really smooths out your skin. It really evens out your complexion without a lot of pigmentation, without any sort of heavy coverage, without overdoing it in any way. But what it has, hold on, I'm gonna drop a little here. And some people have asked me about this dispenser. So you basically wanna get the product down into the tip. So I turn it upside down and then there's a button on the base here. And as soon as you feel like the product is down there, once you hit the button, it'll basically release. So I have about three drops of the foundation. I'm going to apply it and talk about what it is that I love and hopefully you guys will see it. But this foundation makes you look like you've applied a filter to your face. That's what I mean by that light refraction. Like all of a sudden your skin looks softened up it looks uh, even, you don't have any texture, you don't have any fine lines. It is really, really incredible. Let me just finish applying it to my face so you can see what I'm talking about here. I find it to be long lasting. I find it to be buildable. I don't think, I wouldn't say that this goes anywhere beyond um, medium coverage. It's not a foundation that is meant to be really, really high coverage because I think the purpose of this foundation is to give you more of a filtered look versus like a mask. I just put a thin layer all over. And voila. I feel like <laughs> if you guys use Instagram, do you know that Paris filter, the one that you just swipe one over if you're in Instagram stories? Um, it's also an option when you're editing, but if you just swipe once over, it's so subtle, but all of a sudden it just, everything just looks a little, a little bit more perfected. That's what I feel like this foundation does. It's so subtle in its effect, but it's so effective. My skin looks so smooth. I feel like my skin looks very, very even, but you saw the, like the amount that I used. It's so little and obviously you can see my skin through this. You can still see like my sunspots here, whatever, but just somehow it's done this like <laughs> this filtering on your skin. So that is why this is my favorite foundation. It just does the job of perfecting your skin without um, a heavy formula and without a lot of pigmentation. So the Surat Dew Drop Serum Foundation, absolutely love, have been loving it ever since it came out. My absolute favorite. Okay, next up, concealer. The Surat Dew Drop Concealer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm obviously a very, very big fan of Surat's Dew Drop line, but this is a fantastic concealer. It does such a good job in terms of coverage, but it doesn't migrate at all. Like my under eyes look exactly the same at the end of the day as it does when I first apply it. And it really does a great job smoothing. It doesn't look aged, you know, as the day goes on. It is really, really incredible. So I use a shade three, same as the foundation and it has this sponge tip applicator. And I'm just gonna twist it up just a couple of times. I don't need a lot of this. And I usually do like two or three dots and it just blends in quickly in like a dream. Isn't that beautiful? Seamless, absolutely seamless. So this obviously works beautifully underneath the eyes, but it works really, really well on my face as well. Sometimes I find um, concealers that work great under the eyes don't work that great on the face and vice versa, but this is a very versatile concealer. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tap this onto some of my darker sunspots and just gonna blend those in the same brush. I could probably stand to use a deeper shade on my face, but because this blends in so seamlessly, it's not that big of a deal. In terms of coverage, I would say this is like a medium coverage concealer. It's not gonna be super high impact, but it does a really nice job just with that light layer, and you definitely can build it up if you want. All right, gosh, look how bright my under eyes look. That's with the help of that West Bend Atelier super loaded tinted highlight, by the way. Okay, so that was my all time favorite concealer, the Surat Dew Drop Concealer. Let's move on to powder, setting powder, because I have two powders. I have a setting powder and a finishing powder. So setting powder is powder I like to use to set my makeup. And this allows all of this liquid gooey goodness 
um, to be set down by the powder and then you can use powder products on top very easily. If you're going to use more cream products like a cream contour, cream bronzer, you may wanna do that now before you use setting powder, but I'm gonna move forward with just using powder products, but I will talk about my cream favorites as well. Setting powder, this is a change up from last year, you guys. I have loved and still very, very much love the Kogendo Natural Lighting Powder. I know. I can't believe these words are about to come out of my mouth, but something has toppled that. And it's because there are a lot more shade options. So the Kogan No Natural Lighting Powder is just one shade. And when it comes to setting powder, you don't really need a ton of shades. It's translucent. But I think if you wanna have different effects, like a brightening effect, a cooling effect, warm or deeper, if you feel like translucent powders sometimes look a little ashy on your skin, it's nice to have shade options. And this has been a love that's been growing for a very long time. The first time I bought this powder was many years ago, and I've just been using it more and more, and I think I've mentioned that to you guys, but it's the Givenchy Prism Lieb powder. I have uh, three of them, this one's open, because it was sitting on my vanity. I have three of them. I have shades two, three, and five, Number five is like the special edition one, so I don't actually know if this is part of the regular collection. Anyway, I have two and three, at least. So I'm gonna use two today. Two is a little bit, um, I wanna say in general, it's a little bit cooler toned than three. Three is very pinky toned and peachy toned. So I am going to dip a powder brush in here. And what I like to do is take the powder puff out, replace the cap, and then what I do is I quickly turn the powder over and back, and then when I unscrew it, there should be like a nice little coating of powder on top. Now, I went a little crazy, so there's a lot of powder on top here. <laughs> and some people have asked me, well, like, how do you make sure you get, you know, the exact <laughs> same amount of powder from all four quadrants? Um, that's never gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. It's not a perfect science. You're just gonna have to go with it. Um, but whenever I turn you know, the case over and I open it back up, I can see the four different colors in the little pan area here. So I just dip my brush in all four areas and I kind of just mix it around a little bit, knock off the excess. And what I love about the Kogan No Natural Lining Powder, the same goes for the Givenchy. It's the finish of this powder. It is a very, very soft satin finish, and it just makes your skin look very, very soft. Of course, if you use more of this powder, you'll have a matter look, but you'll always have a little bit of a softness there, a, lit, a tiny, 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 <laughs> tiny bit of like a satin glow. And that's my personal favorite type of setting powder. I don't want them too matte. I don't want them too dry. Um, I also don't want them too, do you guys remember when they were coming out with these powders that had like water in them and stuff? I don't want that either. I just, I want like a straight up powder that's gonna set my makeup, but not leave me looking too dry. And that's what this Givenchy Prism Leap powder does. And it's, it's hard. It's hard to find a nice setting powder because you don't want to take away too much of what you've done with your primer and your foundation and your concealer, you know? And if you like dewiness like I do, you know, you don't want to remove all of that. So I feel like this sets down my makeup. It mattifies my skin just a little bit, which I'll be thankful for later on in the day, but it leaves this gorgeous satin finish. Isn't that beautiful? So that is the Givenchy Prism Lieb powder. I had no idea, uh, but apparently this has become like all the rage on TikTok or something. I am so confused by what, <laughs> what hits and what doesn't hit on TikTok. I'm like, this has been around forever, forever. So yeah, anyway, I'm glad it's seeing its time in the spotlight, you wonderful powder. Okay, uh, so that's setting powder. Contour, let's talk about contour. So I do have a cream contour favorite, which I'm not gonna use because I just put powder down. I'm also not gonna use because I can't find it. I don't know what the heck I did with it, but it is the Westman Atelier Face Trace Contour Stick in Biscuit. I think this is a repeat from last year, but it is. Um, it comes in stick form, like many of her cream products, her blush, her lit up highlight stick. It's great, I love it. I love that form, especially for contour because you can draw exactly where you want it, You know, under your cheekbones, around your hairline, on either side of your nose if you want, makes it very, very easy. It blends out beautifully. The tone of Biscuit is gorgeous. It is 
a cool tone brown, but like not too gray. So it's really, really very natural. You don't need too much of it. It's like the contour for someone who's afraid to contour. And she has come out with a, like a deeper shade, uh, but Biscuit is the lightest one, I believe, and it works well for my skin tone. So if you use me as a skin tone reference. I will definitely flash a picture of it up here for you. Um, and you have seen me use it before on this channel, but I really, I like turned my makeup collection upside down, my bathrooms, all my you know little makeup bags. I'm like, did I leave it in a makeup bag when I was traveling? I simply cannot find it. I don't know what I did with it, but that is my favorite. And if I can't find it, I'm gonna have to order a new one. So that's my favorite uh, cream contour product. Now, my favorite powder contour is from Surat. This is um, one of their artistic blushes, but it's in the shade Gris Griselle. Grisol, <laughs> God, here I go again. But look at that beautiful tone. And there is, again, that very slight, subtle satin sheen. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply this, and I'm just gonna use an angled uh, cheek brush. And I believe it was Troy Surratt that said, a bad contour is like a bad toupee. <laughs> just very obvious and unnecessary. So there, I just applied it to this side of my face just so you could see the subtle contour that it's giving me. I put a little bit more right here at the temple, maybe a little bit too much, maybe giving too much shadow, but here it is with, here it is without. You can start to see the effects of the contour. Um, let me go ahead and apply over here. Maybe a little underneath my jawbone, there. So, little bit of contour there. So that is the Surat Grisal. I'll just say Grisal, although I'm pretty sure I'm mispronouncing that. Um, okay, bronzer. So, I do have a favorite cream bronzer, and this was kind of a surprise to me, but I have been using this a lot, and I remember using this a lot during the summertime. And uh, this is the By Mario, it has a super long name, Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer, and I have it in the shade Light. It's just great. It is exactly what it's called. It's very just skin enhancing. I like just picking some up on a brush, something like this, and just kind of sweeping it all over. It really just adds just a little bit of life <laughs> to my complexion. I'm not gonna use this particular product right now because I just put some uh, powder products down, but, it has a great texture, it's so light. It has a great texture and it adds just, just a little bit, I think you can see it there, just a little bit. The shade of this, which makes me think of it more of a bronzer, as a bronzer versus um, a contour, it's just a little bit warmer. I think you can probably see it actually on my hand a little bit more. See that kind of peachiness? I find that to be uh, better for me and as a bronzer. And the difference for me in terms of contour and bronzer, and sometimes I use one product to do both. We brontour every once in a while here. Um, but if I do separate them out, I do like to brush bronzer kind of all over. Basically, it's kind of where you would highlight, although I know that doesn't make sense. But when you bronze, it's like, where does the sun, where has the sun kissed you? And that's generally the forehead, you know, your nose, that underneath the sunglasses area, maybe the tip of your chin. So that's where I generally like to bronze if I'm breaking out bronzing and contouring, if that makes sense. Contouring is where I want to recede. Anyway, that is my bronzer, cream bronzer pick uh, for all time absolute favorite makeup. And in terms of powder bronzer, this is no surprise. This has been my favorite for years running, but this is the Tom Ford Glow Bronzer in Terra number two. I thought they were discontinuing this. This seems to still be available. Shade number one seems to be gone. Shade number one is much peachier. I think it's called Gold Dust or something like that. But Terra to me has a much more neutral shade. It has a little bit more red in there, at least for my skin tone, it really mimics the sun's effects on my skin. So this is, oh God, you know, this, this is getting really, really old and really, really on in its years, but this has such a creamy texture. It blends into your skin and then it almost kind of like melts in. It's really, really gorgeous. It's such a beautiful formula. And this is, I believe the third iteration of Tom Ford bronzers. So the first one was just like a straight up powder. 
Nothing too special, I didn't think. It was like, okay. The second one was like a baked product. A lot of people had a hard time using that. It was hard to pick up the product. It developed hard pan really easily. But this third iteration of Tom Ford bronzer, I wonder if they're gonna come out with more. It was the softest and the creamiest version. So I remember first using this, I got a ton of kick up. So I knew after that not to just go in hard with a, a really stiff, giant bronzer brush. But I just think this one performs beautifully, probably because it is so soft and probably because of that creaminess, it just really melts onto your skin. So I'm just gonna use this powder brush that I used before. I'm gonna pick up some of this bronzer. And like I said, I'm just gonna lightly dust it where I feel like the sun would kiss me. So my forehead the most, my forehead is much tanner than the rest of my face. And then down my nose, kind of underneath the sunglasses, chin a little bit, and voila. I all of a sudden look like I have been out in the sun, doesn't it? <laughs> I love it. This is such a wonderful bronzer. The tone, the formula, the packaging. I still love this packaging, even though it's like old school at this point, but I love this packaging. Um, so anyway, that is my favorite powder bronzer, has been for years. I wonder if they're coming out with a new one. I feel like I've just jinked myself. So let's move on. Cream blush. This is going to be of no surprise. I think this was probably my pick last year, but it's the Kier Weiss cream blush. So I have this Cheek Collective, which is like a face palette. So it's got a bronzer, a highlight, and a blush. So I just pulled this out because you can see here how much I love this. This is such a great travel buddy. Look at how small this is. It's like whisper thin. Uh, super compact cream products, so you can definitely use your fingers. You don't have to bring a brush if you don't want. Um, and you've got like your entire cheek in here. It's so great. Anyway, we're talking about the blush. This blush, so this shade is blossoming. I would say any shade is incredible. They all work the same. I probably have, I don't know, five or seven of them in my collection. And they just, I don't, I don't know what it is. So many blushes, so many cream blushes, blushes in general, fade very quickly. This does not fade. It's easy to work with. Uh, you can use your fingers, like I said. You can use a brush really easily. You can use a sponge if you want. I like to sometimes tap it on. Sometimes I like to use a brush. It just depends on my mood or where I am. It sets down enough so that it doesn't budge, so that it doesn't feel like, you know, if you, uh, run your hand across your cheek, you're gonna have all this blush on your hand. It sets down enough so that it doesn't feel like it's messy, but it doesn't set down completely so that it's like this ink stain on your cheek. Sometimes I feel like um, like cheek products that like set down completely, it's, ju it's just not, it's not like the effect that I want. It doesn't have like a softness to it. So this cream blush has never steered me wrong. It is absolutely gorgeous, goes on like a dream, stays put. The finish of it is wonderful. It's a very, very soft, kind of creamy finish. There's no metallic bits in there. It's not shimmery in any way. It's just, it's just there to give you this very natural glow, and it's stupendous. So that's the Kier Weiss Cream Blush. Powder Blush. This was very tough, very, very tough. I kept going back and forth between two, a third one like entered into the scene. I was like, oh my God, this is so good too. Anyway, I'll tell you what some of the ones were that were kind of runners up. The NARS blush, I just think it's so good. I think the, the shade range is incredible. I think they have the most incredible shades like Exhibit A, like Taj Mahal, really, really different types of blushes. But that didn't make the cut. Um, and then Dior. I've been loving Dior. I love what they've done with the blush. They just recently reformulated it. It's wonderful, it's, it's amazing. However, I thought to myself, if this house was on fire or <laughs> all of these dramatic scenarios, if my house was on fire, if I was going to, a, if I was on a deserted island, you know, what would I bring? <laughs> Makeup, that's the first thing I would bring. I thought to myself, I would bring my Surratt artistic blushes. So I just mentioned the uh, powder contour. Um, but the blushes, <laughs> first of all, I have so many of them. I think I have almost all of them. The colors are incredible. And Surratt's formula is so, so unique and 
just ethereal and gorgeous. And this powder acts like a powder. You pick it up like a powder. It swatches like a powder. But as soon as you start working it onto your face, onto your skin, it melts down like, not even like a cream, but almost like, like you're watercoloring your face. It's so beautiful. So I'm sitting here trying to figure out which blush I want to use. There are quite a few that look like bronzers. There's Chalure, which I really like to use as blush. Here is um, La Rose de Soie, I believe. And I think this was the very first blush of his that I purchased. Let's use that one. Let's go back, all the way back. But you can see there's some really gorgeous bright shades in there that kind of reminded me of NARS. And I was like, this is it. This is what I would grab out of this house if it was on fire. Sorry, terrible scenarios. Okay, so I'm going to take a small blush brush. I'm gonna go into this La Rose de Soie. It has a little bit of pinkiness to it, which I think knocks it out of it being a bronzer or a contour and makes it a blush. Is that not so pretty? And it just goes on like like a whisper, like a cloud, and so easy to use. Look at that. It's like instantly blended. No hard edges, no splotches. Oh, just perfect. So the Surat Artistic Blushes. You can't beat them. They're made in Japan. They use this slurry method to bake those products. They're just gorgeous. Those and the eyeshadows, just incredible. Highlight, well, we've already talked about my liquid highlight uh, pick, which is the Westman Atelier Liquid Super Loaded. Let's talk about powder highlight. This was really tough. As you guys know, I love highlight. I have a lot of powder highlight, but I really love these. And uh, these are a reformulation. And I think they just knocked it out of the park. So these are the Clay de Peau uh, Luminizing Face Enhancers. And previously, when I wanted a highlight that was like just barely highlight, it was basically like a, just a very light colored powder, I would go to Clay de Peau. It was so subtle, but sometimes it's all you wanted and it was great for that. Then they reformulated them and I was like, oh wow, okay, I see, I see. They amped these up so much. So this is shade, sorry, let me get the right number here. It's 202 Golden Galaxy. And I've already lost the brush because I, you know, open and close this compact so much. And um, they have all of these different shades in there. I don't, I just put my brush into the whole thing. Um, what I will mention is that these do have an overspray to them. So they look very micro glittery. Um, I think it's because the company just wants to emphasize like this faceted pattern on there. It looks really cool, but I don't actually like that glitteriness to them, but it it's just an overspray. It brushes away. And once you get down to the actual powder, it is so satiny smooth. Let me do a swatch of this just so you can see. And this Golden Galaxy is like the French vanilla of highlights. It just has that warm, soft, creamy tone to it. Isn't it incredible? It's not too gold. It's not too cool toned. It's not too frosty. It is so gorgeous. So 202 Golden Galaxy is probably the shade that I use like 90% of the time. And then occasionally I like to use this shade, which is 203 Sunset's Brilliance. And this has a little bit more of a peachiness to it. And I'll use this if I want to, I don't know, highlight my cheeks a little bit more, not just my cheekbone or whatever. I'm gonna use both today because I just love this so much. So I'm gonna start with this 203, this peachier one. I'm just using my Sonia G Hinoki brush. And I'm just gonna tap over my blush, which already has a nice soft satin sheen. But if you really wanna amp it up, a little highlight on top there just to give me a little little extra glow there just starts to make my face look a little glossy isn't that so pretty okay so that is 203 let me throw 202 on and I'm gonna use my uh, large fan brush from Sonia G this is actually probably too big hold on <laughs> yeah let me use uh, the medium fan brush 
That large one, I got carried away. I was like, yes, no. Let's use the medium one. I'm going into 202, and I'm just gonna stamp exactly where I want it. Just right on the tops of my cheekbones. I'll do the same thing over here. And then I like to just really buff highlighter in. I think that's what really makes it very smooth looking. Otherwise, it just kind of uh, sits on top of your skin. It looks very powdery. We don't want that. We want it like it's coming from your skin. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh my God, so smooth, so satiny. Absolutely breathtaking. Look at that. Yes. Oh my goodness. Um, and I haven't even talked about the gorgeous packaging. I mean, it's just, it feels like an honor to be able to use this. And these are also refillable. So all around, just such a fantastic, every time I put this highlight on, I just end up doing this for a long time in the mirror. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay, uh, so that is my highlighter pick. Absolute all-time favorite. Um, eyebrows. You guys, it cannot be denied. The Persona Swipe Up Brow Gel and Charcoal. I've just been using it nonstop. The Tom Ford Fiber Brow Gel was my favorite for the longest time. It may still have been my favorite last year, but I just don't know what they're doing with that. It seems to be coming in and out. Uh, they reformulated it and now it's not in stock again. I really don't know what's going on with that anyway. I can't stand the inconsistency. It makes me nervous. So I've just been going hard with the Persona Swipe Up Brow Gel and it's great. It's easy to use. Um, it's very natural looking. It's almost mistake proof. And I really like this charcoal shade. It's very cool toned and it just does enough. I don't need gigantic caterpillar brows. I don't need brows that are like completely solid. I just want like a my brow but better situation. And that is what the Persona Swipe Up Brow Gel will give you. So love this, love it. Okay, eyeshadow. This has not changed, I don't believe. Um, and this, again, so difficult, so, so difficult. I wanted to pick the Surratt Artistic Eyeshadows. I think the fact that they come in single pans and I have to put them in a palette, it doesn't annoy me, but I wish um, they sold them all just like in a, in a straight up kind of regular eyeshadow palette. Anyway, I went with the Natasha Denona 28 pan green brown palette. This is still my favorite. This is still for sale on her site. I don't think it's for sale on many sites, um, but I love these two rows, these two rows. When I want a green, there's a green in here. The colors up at the top are gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And I think these are the very first some of the very first eyeshadow palettes that Natasha Denona came out with, and I was like, she hit it out of the park. Of course, I was debating, debating whether or not I should say it's the I Need a Nude palette because I've just been going so hard with this one. But again, again, I had that scenario in my head. If I had to come in here and like grab what I wanted in 10 seconds or less, I would grab this. I would grab this over the I Need a Nude because I pretty much have all the nude shades that I want right here. I have some warmer, deeper ones over here. And then if I wanna get a little funky, I've got some shades in the middle. Um, and the I Need a Nude really stays kind of in this lane right here, you know? So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and apply some shadows from here. I think I need, this palette of mine is very old. I think it's probably about five years old. I think I need to just get a new one. You know, there comes a time where you're like, I, I think I need to refresh everything. Still behaves well, still no scent, no smell, no funkiness, no oozing <laughs> of anything. But you know, there just comes a time. But anyway, let me go ahead and find a proper brush. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go into this shade right here, which is a matte shade and it's called Shell. Just gonna put this kind of all over, outer corner, towards the midsection of my lid, up into my brow bone area. Look at that, it still blends out like a dream. Like a dream, it's amazing. This, yeah, this palette is just so good. So, so good.
All right, that is Shell. I am going to, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. I think, ah, so many options. 28 shadows really is a lot. I remember thinking when I first got this and I was very new to makeup, I just loved the look of this palette, had to get it. Um, I was so overwhelmed, so, so overwhelmed. I think I would come in here and like use one of these shadows and then like leave. Basically, I'd leave the room. But since I'm more comfortable, I should probably branch out a little bit. I'm gonna go into this shade right here. This is like a metallic shade. The name of it is Satin Tan. I don't even understand the designations she has for these anymore. It's a P. Don't even know what that stands for. I'm gonna take the same brush because I want a real soft um, application of this. Just like all over my outer corner here. Then I'm going to grab, let's see, a flat shader. I'm gonna go into this shade, which is called Moonstone. <gasps> Funny, right here. Okay, so that's this shade right here. And I'm gonna apply this to the inner portion of my lid and blend it over towards the mid part of my lid. Oh God, that's stunning. Guys, this palette is still kicking ass. I gotta leave this palette out. I don't use it enough. All right, I'm gonna take my Esom W36 brush. I'm gonna go into a deeper shade than the one that I used here and just add even a bit more dimension. I don't know if I should go for this green, maybe, or go down here. I'm gonna go for the green, let's try it. Actually, I was pointing at this one. I'm gonna go with this one. This one has a little bit more silver to it. Let's see, I'm just gonna add a bit to the corner here. Ooh, ooh, I like that. Little, little smoky. I'm gonna take that first blender brush and run it over that smoky shade I just put down. What's the name of this? It's called Industrial. That used to be a club I went to in New York. What do you guys think about this five-year-old, well, five-year-old to me palette, but a much older palette. It is still, still doing its thing. Good golly. Well, thank you, Natasha Denona, for your gorgeous eyeshadow palettes. So that is my all-time favorite. As you just witnessed, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, eyeliner. Uh, I think this is a change from last year. I'm not sure, possibly. But you guys have seen me use this eyeliner just all year. It's the Hourglass Voyeur Waterproof Gel Eyeliner. Now, I'm, <laughs> I'm staring at all these shades, and this is another, I feel like I must have misplaced a small little makeup bag that I packed for like a quick trip or something because I cannot find my Voyeur and Cave, which is just the dark brown. It's a shade that I used all the time. Uh, but I have like almost every other shade, but I have the black shade, which is Obsidian, and this bronzy shade, Solstice. I have these two sitting out here. This eyeliner is just great. It goes on smoothly, easily. It stays put. It never, ever budges on me. It sets down completely. It doesn't set down immediately, so if you want to smudge it out a little bit, it gives you a little bit of time. I would do one eye at a time, just in case, if you want to do that. It is a roll-up eyeliner, which I have to admit is convenient. I generally typically like ones that you sharpen because they don't dry out, et cetera, et cetera. They won't break off, but I keep these pretty low in their case so they don't crack or anything. And these have lasted really well for me. So I'm going to go ahead and use, I'm going to use this uh, solstice one, this bronze one. I think the black would be a little bit too stark uh, for this look. So I'm going to tight line with this and also drag a little bit over my lash line. This is such a pretty color, the solstice color, because it's light, but it's effective, you know? I'm also gonna put some in my waterline. So there it is applied and there it is without, right? It's a real subtle change when you use the bronze, very pretty. All right, so that is my eyeliner pick. I'm just gonna go ahead and curl my lashes, 
and we'll be back to talk about mascara. Okay, this was tough. <laughs> this was tough too. So I have been using the Lancome Lashy Doll Waterproof for a very long time. Before that, I was using the non-waterproof version. It's great. I love Lancome. If I only had this mascara to use for the rest of my life, I'd be very happy. However, again, if I had to come in here and look at all my mascaras, what is the one that I would grab? It's the Wayne Goss Waterproof Mascara. It's, it's just so good. It's easy to use and it keeps the curl to my lashes. The Lancome Waterproof one does as well, but this one is even better. And you know, when it comes to mascara, yeah, I've been using this one a lot, but it's because when I open one up, I. I just want to get through it. But anyway, I do have this one from Wayne Goss, so I'm going to use this. It has just this tiny, tidy little wand. And even if I don't curl my lashes fully, you know, I just do like a quick job and they're already starting to like fade a little bit. As soon as I put this mascara on, whoop, they come right up and it's just such a miracle worker. Look at how great my lashes look. They look long, they look separated, and they look curled. This is the one. This is the best mascara I've ever used. In addition to this one, there are other mascaras that I really love. The Chantecai, um Longest Lash Faux Seals Mascara, the Surat one. But again, this is the one I would grab. This is the one I would grab out of my burning house. So there is one last eye product that I want to talk about that I was not able to use. I guess I could have, um, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to mess up the Natasha Denona vibe. But um, in terms of cream slash liquid eyeshadows, I have a lot, and I really, really love cream shadows. I think they're fantastic. They're great, and I love the Sisley one. I think that's the one that I picked last year. I still love those. But these liquid luster eyes from Suku are something special. Let me tell you, I just was able to use these for the first time this past year. Uh, Suku did send these to me. I was like, okay, let me give these a shot. They are so unique, so easy to use, so beautiful. Let me show you. And when it comes to cream shadows, I think it is hard to create a formula that works really well. They're either um, patchy or they set down and they start to flake. Um, or they're not pigmented enough, like all of these things. However, Suku somehow managed to create these liquid shadows, cream shadows, that give you this, it's so interesting because it's like a solid film of it, but there is a translucency to them. I don't know how to describe it. I don't know if there's a word for it, but it's almost like a sheer veil. I hope you can see what I'm talking about. They're just absolutely stunning. So the gray silvery shade, I believe is shade 203. And then this gold shade, which has a little bit of iridescence in there. I hope my light is catching it, is shade 183 and they're easy to use. You can just swipe them on. They have a doe foot applicator. I don't know if I show that to you. They have a doe foot applicator, much like lip gloss, and just swipe them on. I tap them out with my fingers, done. You can use this as a one and done shadow. I pair them up with powder shadows where I'll use this like on the inner corner. I'll use powder shadow on the outer corner. They blend beautifully. They're just incredible, absolutely incredible. So these are my new favorite cream eyeshadows of all time. Just this formula just blew everyone else out of the water. Okay, let's move on to lips now. Oh, here's another hourglass. Is this cave? No, this is the purpley one. This is chestnut. I don't know where cave is. Okay, <laughs> my new favorite lip liner are these from Farah Homidi. So I have been really enjoying Dew. D-O-U-X, that is the lightest nude shade that she has. But she also has Minky, which is a deeper nude shade. And then she has two red shades. And these are to match up with her Essential Lip Compacts. So let me just swatch out some of these. So there's Minky at the bottom, and then the red above it is Premier and then the deeper red above that is velvet. And then here is Dew, which is the one that I wear the most. It is a little pinkier and lighter than Minky. I love the shades. I love the formula of this pencil. It's so good. I just really, really love them. I 
in the past have loved the Sicily lip liners. I still do. They are incredible. They stay put, they're not drying, but the same for these. And there's something about this dew shade and the minky shade that does such a wonderful job contouring my lips without being too cool toned, as you can see. They're actually kind of warm, especially the minky. But there's just something really, the undertone to them is really, really special. So I've been using Dew. Let me go ahead and use Minky. Let me change it up a little bit. I'm gonna apply this. And these are the ones that you sharpen, which I do prefer. And they're really, um, they're soft, but not too soft. They definitely set down, they don't budge. So there is Minky on my top lip. Isn't that such a great shade? Even when I swatch it out, and with the experience that I've had with shades that are like this, I thought it was gonna end up being too warm toned on my lips to act kind of like a little bit of a contour. I thought it was gonna be a little bit too orangey, but it really, really kind of cools down. The shades are excellent. She only has four and they're all really incredible. And there's something about the undertone that she uses. It's just beautiful. So these are my absolute favorite lip liners. These are the ones that I would grab out of my burning house. Sorry, I'm gonna stop saying that. It's <laughs> such a catastrophic example. And my all-time favorite lipstick, this is also a change-up, but I, I love the shades and I love this formula. These are the Clay de Peau lipsticks. I've been using 10, 11, and 12, <laughs> pretty much nonstop. The formula of these lipsticks are just perfection. They're creamy, they're comfortable, they're really, really well pigmented. Uh, I think what I've picked in the past is like the Chantecai Lip Chic or the Lip Veil. I love all of the Chantecai lipstick formulas so, so much. But there's something about these cream lipsticks from Clay de Peau that has had me reaching for these a lot more. The Lip Chics and the Lip Veils, they're so moisturizing. They're beautiful on the lips. They feel great. My lips feel great after using them. But for some reason, I have just been reaching for these so much more. And I think it's because I just want a little bit more of an oomph in terms of pigment when I reach for a lipstick. I have plenty of lip glosses and things, but when it comes to a lipstick, I want a little bit more pigmentation. So this one in the middle, number 11, which is Triumphant Tawny, that is the one that I use the most. Of course, if I want something a little bit deeper, this Power Mauve is great, and number 10, Tantalizing Tan, is great too. This one is just a little bit peachier, but this one is like my lane. Like this is my everyday, I love it. In fact, I just had to walk out of the room and find it because it was in my purse. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and apply that. I love the color. It's just cool toned enough. I don't feel like I look like a corpse, although you guys know I don't necessarily mind that look, but this is a very comfortable cool toned. I don't feel like it's too stark of a shade but it is definitely on the cooler side. And mixed with that minky lip liner, amazing, absolutely amazing. Okay, so that is my absolute all-time favorite lipstick. And last but not least, in terms of lips, lip gloss. Wow, was this hard. I have a lot of lip gloss. I wear a lot of lip gloss. I was like, I don't know, maybe this one, maybe that one. Again, I had to like pull myself into the scenario of like having to run in here grab something in 10 seconds, and I went with the Lisa Eldridge. The Gloss Embrace lip glosses, I think that's the full name. Anyway, I have Affair, look at that shade. Then I have Sorcery, and I brought Sorcery over to Europe, so that tells you how much. <laughs> How much I love because I didn't pack much for Europe. And then this one is Decade. These are definitely the three shades that I use the most. Her formula is incredible, super comfortable, very, um, I don't wanna say plumping and give you the wrong impression because it's not a, an irritating kind of product. It's not plumping in that way, but it's so moisturizing that it just, it fills in like, it just inflates my lips with moisture. And so they're less, liney, they look smooth, they look pillowy. It really makes my lips look pillowy. There's nothing better than pillowy lips. So the formula is incredible. The colors are incredible. And I love the level of pigmentation. Not too much, not too little. There are a lot of formulas out there that I love, but the pigmentation is almost non-existent. So that is um, a fair. 
And then there's some lip glosses where I'm like, why bother? This is like a liquid lipstick. Um, so I really like the level of pigmentation. It's there, but it's not too much. The colors are wonderful. The packaging is just gorgeous to look at. I love this like brushed gold cap. There's just nothing wrong with these lip glosses. And many of you probably think I would have picked the U Beauty Plasma Lip Compound tints. I don't consider those makeup. They may show up in a skincare video coming to you soon. <laughs> So see how I like to bend the rules. Anyway, so that is my lip gloss pick. I would definitely grab these three lip glosses if I was in a rush. So last but not least, finishing powder. I have not talked about finishing powder in a really, really long time. It is absolutely not something I use every day or whenever I use, uh, put on makeup. Um, it's not a step that I always do. But if I am doing like a full face like I am today, just glammed out, I do like to finish off my makeup with finishing powder and there's none other than the Guerlain Meteorites. So I have medium and I have light. I'm actually gonna use light. I used to use medium all the time, but I definitely have gotten more and more pale the older I've gotten. And this happens to be in some limited edition packaging for Lunar New Year. Now, if you're new to my channel, newish to my channel, um, you probably have never heard me talk about these or even demonstrated how I like to use them, but I got all of these tips from Tara Babies, who has shown me the light in terms of these meteorites. So when I first got meteorites, I don't know, I just put in like a powder brush and I just kind of dusted it on my face and I was like, okay, this just looks really powdery. This product really shines when you buff it in and when you use it as finishing powder. I would not use this as setting powder. It's not my thing. There is a little bit of like glisten to it. So if you want a bit of radiance to your complexion, this is a great last step. So what I like to do is turn this over, shake it a little bit. You don't wanna break up the pearls necessarily, but you wanna get some of the powder off of them. And then there's all this powder on the cap. There's a lot of powder sitting on top of the pearls. And what you wanna do is you wanna find a buffing brush. There is absolutely no better brush for this job than the Sonia G Buffer Pro brush. So it's a flat top kabuki brush. These are natural bristles. And I'm gonna go ahead and just pick up some of the powder off of the lid. I just want a nice kind of layer on the top of this brush. And I'm just going to stamp. Now I don't apply finishing powder all over my face. I just wanna use it where I can buff. So I basically use it on my cheeks. I'll use a little bit on my forehead and maybe kind of like dust some extra down my nose and on my chin, but that's it. So I'm just gonna press the powder in first and then I'm going to grab a little bit more and then I'm gonna buff. And I've equated this process <laughs> to like a Zamboni <laughs> or one of those like marble polishing things that you see in giant commercial office buildings. There's that gentleman pushing that big polishing machine with the big fluffy things kind of like <laughs> turning around. That's what you're doing basically to your face. And you just end up with this like marble skin. And when I met Tar Babies a few weeks ago at this point, I meant to thank her for showing me how to use this powder and I completely forgot. Tap some onto my forehead and buff. Like marble. Oh my God. <laughs> I feel like every time I do the finishing powder step, I ask myself, Michelle, why don't you do this every time you do your makeup? It just blends everything out. If, uh, let's say you did do like a bronzer, you know, blush highlight situation, and you've got that Neapolitan ice cream look on your cheeks, and you're like, ooh, that looks a little bit too stripey. If you go in with finishing powder, you can blend it all out, soften it all up. It just looks incredible. That is my all time absolute favorite makeup. I hope you enjoyed this video. It is really, really long. So thank you. If you are still here, thank you <laughs> from the bottom of my heart. And I hope you're enjoying Mishmas. I will see you in tomorrow's Mishmas video.